but it is here to stay. It is going to be part of our future. So my view behind it was, as I mentioned earlier, was to get somebody here to educate the members about what cryptocurrency is, how it's going to be, how it's going to impact them, and the different ways that you can invest within, within that space. And my mission pretty much was to find who is one of the most respected, if not the most respected, individual within this space within the UK. It didn't take me very long uh, because in, this, in, in my field I get to speak to a lot of people that know a lot of people that, that know everything about everything, fortunately. And there's one name that kept on popping up from time after time after time. And it didn't take me very long. I, did, I had a look obviously at, at, your, at, at Science website, I had a look through social media, and I had a look most importantly at the results that he had achieved, not only for himself, and his background, but for his clients and his students and stuff like that. So from my point of view, from the results point of view, and from the ethics and everything that sat behind this man, it was a no-brainer for me to bring him here. Because my credibility is all, about the, uh, is all about the delivery from the people that I bring here. So I am a part of a global brand. I cannot let anybody down. So I had to bring one of the foremost people in cryptocurrency space within the UK, Simon Kidd. <laughs> I always feel really cringy when people introduce me like that because like, all my life my mum has always been like, you're shit, you're shit, and I've never impressed <laughs> Honestly, she's still waiting for me to grow up and get a job, like a proper job. Um, so yeah, so yeah, if I'm half a person, as uh, John said, you're in for a treat. <laughs> um, so before we go any, any further, I, I always ask this because I like seeing the cadence of um, the different, well, the, the, the trends basically, because Basically, hands up if you own any cryptos right now. Yeah, I see that's what I thought. Like, I asked that very same question to loads of audiences just a year ago, and there'd be one or two hands up. So, but mind you, you guys are not the general public. You are not the average Joe on the street. Um, hell, you're the intelligent network here, so <laughs> um, I would expect nothing less. Now, I, I just want to go through a few things, I, my definition of an idiot. Now, I apologise for those of you who have already, already seen um, this country level um, presentation, but it's really important. And I have two definitions of uh, being an idiot. So the first one is someone that makes an opinion based on zero research facts or evidence. We all know one of them, right? Yeah, yeah your in-laws, fine, yeah. Um, <laughs> And the other one is someone who may have had a correct opinion or a stance, but then fails to adapt in accordance to you know, uh, an ever-changing environment or ecosystem. And the thing is, I've been both of those idiots many times in my life because I'm a stubborn idiot. Um, but the thing is, as an investor, it's that sort of idiocy that ruins your bank account. You can spend a decade trying to accumulate your, maths, uh, your, your wealth, but all it takes is one idiotic stance or belief, and you're, you're, you, you will ruin yourself. So I've pushed myself back probably 10 years uh, in terms of wealth generation. So I'm very aware of it. So you always have to have an open mind, always. Uh, and then use fact, facts, um, actual facts, not fake news, facts uh, and real data to form your uh, opinion. And the thing is, even though I'm, I guess, the crypto guy or a crypto guy at the moment, um, I'm still its biggest critic. And from 2009 to, well, late 2016, I was the biggest naysayer ever. Like, I'd say, oh, Bitcoin's going to crash. And like, pretty much two or three times a year, Bitcoin did crash. And I was like, ah, told you. But then each crash would be at a higher level. Um, and I'd always miss out. And, and even now, where I, once I realized I was an idiot and then flipped my position, I, I'm still the biggest critic. This, this whole market is the scammiest, riskiest, most volatile uh, market on the planet, but it's also the most amazing market. It's beautiful. It really is when you know how, how, it, how it flows and how to really capitalize on it. Um, it's 1% utility value, 99% bullshit, hope, fake news, dreams, and greed. I shit you not, that is the reality though. So but the thing is, as an investor, you mustn't let that get in the way of you making a profit. Okay, so you can, yeah, take that and then do something good with it. Um, so don't kid yourself. Yes, this is, this is a bigger deal than what the internet was in, mid in the mid-1990s. Way bigger. Uh, and back then we had all the same naysayers, people like me saying, 
who, who the hell are you going to send an email to? Like, no one has an email address. Well, the whole world is like held to ransom by emails, right? And right now we're having the same conversation where people are saying, who are you going to send your Bitcoin to? No one has a crypto wallet or a Bitcoin wallet. Yeah, well, just give it five years. Um, I mean, hell, look at contactless technology. Where the hell was that three years ago? Or even two years ago? It was nowhere. Now I'm pissed off if I have to spend more than 30 pounds. I'm like, <laughs> him, <laughs> him. <laughs> say. Um, and like, I, I, I promise you, at some point we'll have an RFID chip in our finger, hand, or whatever, connected to your crypto account, and you'll just wave your way into buying stuff. Or not wave, but you're just, yeah, bought. Um, and that's what will happen. So, yeah, and there's a thing called the networking effect. Anyone heard of the networking effect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, a few people. So, the, the fact that people are using the fax machine. So, if you have one person with one fax machine, the net value of that whole network is bugger all, because that person can't talk to anyone. The moment two people have a fax machine, all of a sudden, that network has value, because they can communicate with each other. Obviously, what they communicate is a different matter. But then, <laughs> then it's an exponential growth in terms of the value of the network. And at the moment, Cryptos are in its infancy networking uh, effect stage. Like, it's the equivalent of having you know, four people in a room with a fax machine. But just give it time. It is like wildfire. So even though I'm all in, I'm not, I'm not all in on cryptos, but like every waking moment I'm thinking and breathing cryptos, I'm still its biggest critic. I really am. Um, don't know why that sign isn't there. Sorry, I've had to like, bastardize the other <laughs> sign. Um, basically, I've been a trader for about 13 years, so here, there's loads of pretenders out there at the moment. You know, people who have never been in finance or whatever. In fact, I met a crypto expert the other day, or the other week, who um, all her life she was um, a, a beautician, and now all of a sudden, in the space of the last six months, she's like a so-called crypto expert, etc. And this whole industry, because there's no barrier to entry, every man and his dog is now a crypto expert. Um, and the thing is, with cryptos, it's like an iceberg. The 5% or the 10% that you can see above the surface is, you know, crypto knowledge, and anyone can do 10 hours of hard Googling and know quite a lot and learn quite a lot about crypto. It's easy, just Google it. But the 95% of knowledge which you actually need is the stuff you can't Google. It's the 13 years of trading where I've had to lose hand over fist. I lost two grand a month, every month, for at least four years in a row. Um, some would call that a gambling problem. Um, <laughs> uh, as I said, I'm a stubborn idiot. And um, yeah, it, 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 eventually it paid off. And the thing is, we, like, yes, it is not a direct, you can't just take all, uh, like, I'm a currency trader. And, and what I thought, when, the, when I finally got into cryptos, I was like, okay, I'll just use all my currency stuff. I'm going to nail it. It's going to be easy. And I have what, I don't know, call it, call it a quiver of, what, eight arrows or eight strategies which I use with uh, currencies. And then the market handed me my, my ass to me, uh, like day after day. And it just wasn't as easy as just deploying what I did in the currency market into cryptos, even though crypto technically is a currency. Well, no, no Bitcoin is. Um, another topic. And so now I'm down to maybe two arrows which work effectively. And the thing is, those who haven't been trading in the past will have no idea. And has, hands up who's heard of babypips.com. Okay, a few people. Okay, so you'll see all these websites out there, like Baby Pips or whatever, where they're free uh, resources where you can teach yourself how to trade, how you know certain market patterns, yada yada yada. Well, that is a hunting ground for predators. Now you have to understand that most most of the public get wiped out by the big money, um, the, the the prop traders, the institutional. Uh, the, I'm just going to call it the big the, the big money. And if you have a trading floor on a bank or basically some big whales. Some people say call them whales. Whales are nice things. I, I prefer killer sharks. Killer sharks, no, killer whales, sorry. Double baby, baby seals, <coughs> and they're just waiting there to club them. Sorry, bad analogy. Um, <laughs> but that is why so many people are getting burned right now. Um, so anyway, that's probably what that slide is about. Um, <laughs> now, here are the seven reasons why I really wasn't keen. I'm gonna rattle through these, because every, Every negative thought about cryptos you have right now, or have had, I still have, okay? So the first one, like, I used to be a bullion dealer by accident, and uh, my saying is that if you, if, you, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. So I love holding real physical bullion, not the paper stuff. 
And so for me, when I came across cryptos, I was like, it's not a real thing. I can't hold cryptos. It's just silly internet monopoly money, which I can't pay my taxes with. Yeah? We've all thought that, right? Um, and guess what? That's still the case. That, that is still the case. Um, so yeah, that held me back for a while. Um, whoo, it, it is, it will be, and it is the biggest bubble in human history. It, like the tulip mania of 1636 doesn't come close to this bubble that we're going through right now. Uh, or that, what it will be. Um, that held me back. There's loads of counterparty risk. Like one, the, the magic superpower of cryptos, please remember, remember this, the superpower of cryptos is, 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 is its ability to disintermediate things, okay? So anything that has control, power, or trust, that's gonna be wiped out. Banks, destroyed. Estate agents, destroyed. E escrow, destroyed. Um, any, any form of middleman is gonna be absolutely wiped out. That's the secret um, superpower of cryptos. And, and I just find it ironic how there are so many middlemen businesses popping up within the crypto industry. It's like, hey, I'm gonna be your crypto advisor, give me your money and I'll invest it for you. Or give it to me and I'll do this with it. All you're doing is you're adding counterparty risk. And what's happened is that there have been so many funds that have been set up on cryptos going, hey, here's a super crypto fund, invest $10, $1,000, whatever. Um, we're gonna raise $50 million and we're gonna invest it in this super crypto or a whole basket. Well, there's been so many times where they've hit the hard cap, they've raised all the money, and then a few months later, whoops, we've been hacked. Sorry. Um, and then the, the directors sail away in the sunset, never to be seen again. Um, like, the, like all the, sh the, the, the fun and games, and oh, they're not fun and games, all of the shenanigans happening right now, I saw all of this in the currency market 10 years ago. It's the same bad actors, the same methods, just in a different skirt, in a horrible STI <laughs> skirt. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, so you've got to be protected. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, central banks and governments don't like it at all. Um, when you look at the, 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 the elite, whoever you, like, you don't need to think of the Illuminati or whatever. Whoever controls, I'm just going to use the word elite, okay? Whatever that means to you. The elite is at least a $200 trillion market. Okay? That have spent at least a thousand years getting their tentacles across the, the globe. Money is not a thing for them anymore. It's control. It's the retention of power. And um, I, I'm a bit of a historian, um, like a geek. And yeah, basically, if you, if you look at, if you read loads of biographies or autobiographies of, of um, wealthy people, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, etc., then one of their main fears is retention of their power. Like, are my kids going to blow all of our money or, and our, our empire and stuff like that? Um, that's why there's a saying, you know, generation one starts it, generation two throws it, generation three blows it. Uh, and that's the same with, you know, big wealthy families. Anyway, central, the, the elite, all of a sudden, we've got this $400 billion market prodding them going, we're going to steal your $200 billion, uh, trillion dollar market. Like, for me, that was a big objection because I thought the elite are just going to, like, see you later. They can't do that though. Cryptos are like a hydra. You chop one head off, there's a thousand that pops up. The only way to kill cryptos is to kill the internet. And we all know that can't happen. So this is here to stay. It is like wildfire. Um, top investing rule, never invest in something you don't understand. And I'm not an academic. I got, I got two Ds from my A-levels. So it took me a while to really get my head around, around cryptos. Hell, the, just the, the simple question, what is a crypto, probably took me three months. Like, yes, you can Wikipedia and get some sort of state, you know, normal answer or whatever, but do you really know what that means? And, yeah, it, so again, I didn't, I didn't understand it, so I didn't want to expose my capital towards it. Bitcoin wasn't, still isn't scalable for everyday use. Um, it's morphed into something else. So Bitcoin was launched in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto. Could be a guy, girl, or a group of people. I've got my tin hat theories about who, is, who Nakamoto is, or Satoshi is. Um, but the thing is, Bitcoin was released as a new world currency. Well, that can't happen now. Like, if you were to... I mean, there's loads of scalability issues. I don't want to, I'll save that for afterwards, because I'm getting a bit too in-depth here. But long story short, Bitcoin has morphed into sort of a, a digital gold. That's basically what it is. No one wants to spend it, because it's appreciating so freaking fast. So you can't have a currency which everyone hoards. 
Um, so eventually what I'll see in the future is that we'll end up, like, after, after a while, all currency on the planet will be cryptified, um, and then eventually we'll probably end up with, I'm, I'm talking about 20, 30 years in the future here, we'll probably end up with two, two currencies, two global currencies, a spending currency and a saving currency. So you need to store your, I mean, in fact, this is Investing 101, store your wealth in depreciating assets, Sorry. <laughs> sorry, depreciating <laughs> currencies, sorry, and you spend in inflationary currencies, okay? So that way you're, well, basically you're, 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 you're store, so the reason why Bitcoin, is, one of the reasons why it's gone up so much is that it's scarce. It's artificially uh, been scarce. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin, the last one mined in 2140, so a long time away. Um, and so they've, they've tried to make it like gold as much as possible. <laughs> so obviously the price of that is going to go up. Over, over, you know, the more people come into this in, into this finite pool, the, the higher that price will rise. Whereas, if you look at the dollar, the pound, the rupee, the yen, the lira, lira doesn't even exist, exist anymore. Um, like they are being inflated away every freaking day. So the the purchasing power, the, the the value of that money is always going to drop. So you need to spend that. It's like the the, the pounds in your pocket is like an ice cube. You need to spend that shit quick. Um, so yeah. Anyway, Bitcoin is now not a currency, it never will be, and like it has it, like, okay, going a little bit down, um, it, it's block size is one megabyte, right? And there's this whole hoo-ha about, oh my god, it's not big enough, one megabyte, blah, 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 it can only do a maximum of seven transactions per second, it's averaging about three, three and a half. But the thing is, if Bitcoin was to be the global currency, you'd need a block size of about 320 terabytes, not one megabyte. So the whole argument between Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash is stupid because they're arguing between one megabyte and eight megabytes. Well, really, you need, or in fact, you don't even need blockchain technology. That's them. It's like them arguing the difference between right. The future of transport is horse and cart, but we have a fancy cart. It's got like alloys. Um, whereas this other one is going, yeah, but my horse has like funny hooves. So when in fact the future is a car, not a horse. So yeah. Anyway. I'm, I'm going to have to go through these slides a lot faster, I'll be here all night. Um, there's a bottleneck. 40 to 60% of the whole Bitcoin uh, computing power is in, in the Shenzhen area in China. And for a long time I said, if China really wanted to kill uh, Bitcoin, not crypto, so if they wanted to kill Bitcoin, all they'd need to do is bomb those three factories. There's about three factories which account for at least half the world's uh, Bitcoin power. Now, that wouldn't necessarily kill it, it would dump it for a long time, because what will happen is that the, block, the Bitcoin network will freeze up. No one could buy or sell anything for at least three months until the rest of the world um, catches up in, you know, to, to unclog the whole network. But what do you think every order will be on the network when it does go live? Sell, sell, mm. sell, sell, sell. Yeah, it will kill the price by 90, 99%. So in a way, I sort of hope that happens, because when it does go live, it drops 99%. I'm going to hoover up everything. Um, and I'm not going to wait, like if that, if that does happen, I'm not going to dick about waiting for it to go on the exchanges. You, I'm going to have to go over the OTC, over the counter. You'd have to speak to the, you know, the, the big boys, because big money, the institutional money will hoover that up before it ever gets anywhere near an exchange. Anyway, we're talking about something which may not even happen, so anyway. And yeah, this is, this is a typical chart of Bitcoin. Way Ah, shit. And then, way gosh, and it just does that all the time. Um, and every time it did that, I was like, I told you so. Um, so, am I going too fast? I feel I'm like, mm. you, you good? Cool. Yes. Uh, the last time that happened was the UK government releasing its, its guilt, its gilded edge bomb. Um, and humans, we are naturally very cautious, but we're also very curious. And what happens is whenever a new asset class enters the, 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 the public domain, we're like curious little fish, and we, we, go, we invest into it. And so the price goes up. And recently, we've really got two new assets. We've got cryptos in general, but also ICOs, the initial coin offering mar um, yeah, market. Again, that's scammy as well, but yeah. So basically, this is brand new and shiny. Humans are gonna pile into it, and, and it has. We haven't even started, by the way. Uh, the second reason is, this shocked me about a year and a half ago when I found out. 3.2 billion people don't have access to the internet. There I was, thumb and bum, mind in neutral, thinking everyone was on the internet, and then realizing that half oh, the planet literally can't have water, let alone the internet. This is huge. 
And a lot of people think this is the age of information technology and all stuff like that. But really, think about it. This is the age of enlightenment. Because over the next 10 to 15 years, 3.8 billion people are going to come online. 3.8 billion people. That's huge. Imagine the minds, the talents, the geniuses in there. In fact, I, I actually did the stats. Um, Einstein and Stephen Hawking had an IQ of about 160 plus. Okay. Now, statistically, according to medicine, there's two types of things. Long story short, there's roughly one person in every 32,500 people that has an IQ of 160. With an extra 3.8 billion people coming online to the internet, that's roughly 115,000 Albert Einsteins coming online. Crazy, right? I can't freaking wait. Imagine the technologies and the stuff they're going to, you know, so that is amazing. Just hell, 100,000 Stephen Hawking's, that's only going to do good. So, yeah, and the thing is, when they come online, they're not going to get a bank account because they don't have proof of address, utility bills, they don't really have a house. So they're just going to get a crypto account, which they can get in 20 seconds with no proof of, you know, anything. Um, so, the other reason, this market cap is exploding, um, but we haven't set foot in it yet. Like, the, the market has barely moved uh, when you look at the big picture, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so now is, I, I can't think of a better, uh, you know, people say, oh, this is a ground floor opportunity, all those cheesy, you know, phrases. It is, really. I just can't think of a non-cheesy phrase. It's the beginning, there we go. Um, number four. Block ah, there's, there's a bit of a that's an error there. Blockchain won't consume the planet. Blockchain is a, is the cart on the horse and cart. Okay, it's a defunct technology. Blockchain technology is basically another word for DLT, distributed ledger technologies. That DLTs will change the world. It will consume everything. Um, and yeah, honestly, oh, it's a bit harsh, but you would be a fool to ignore this. What do you think a young Bill Gates would be doing right now? Hell, yeah, maybe not a bank, but he'll probably be trying to do some sort of DLT. Um, he's never been keen on finances, but he, I bet you my bottom dollar, he'd be setting up some sort of DLT, you know, a, a blockchain type business of some sort. Um, yeah, it, it's going to consume the world, it really, it really will, whether you know it or not. Um, yeah, we are nowhere near the heat bubble. People go, oh yeah, Bitcoin, you know, the whole market will crash, etc. Yes, it will. Yes, we've had, what, roughly a 70% dip over the last quarter? Yeah, it's not a crash. Well, technically it is a crash, but it's not the crash everyone's talking about. Um, put it this way, the tech bubble popped at $6.7 trillion. And in 2001 money, that's roughly um, 9.26 trillion in today's money. That was, yeah. I've got, basically, I, I, hired, I used to, not anymore, I used to hire a statistician, and, we, and I basically his sole job was to model thousands, no, tens of thousands of different um, stats, models, portfolio application um, techniques, etc. And one of the things that is, the question I wanted to get to is like, when is peak bubble? Like, people go, right, I'm going to get out of this crypto or that or Bitcoin here at a certain price. Well, most people pluck that price out of their ass, go, you know, just because they think it'll go that high, they'll be happy with that price. But you, it's, a, it's a crude way of de determining when to get in or out of the market. So the better way to look at it is at what point will the global market cap start popping? That's when you need to get out. So I don't care when, if, whether Bitcoin will crash at 20, 50, 100 or a million dollars uh, per Bitcoin. It could. It could get to a million. It could get to 500,000. It could, whatever. It's all about the, the global market cap. So that's all I, I measure. And this also gets rid of that question of when do you think the bubble will pop? Your guess is as good as mine. My thoughts are probably in, I don't know, about two years. But again, I could be wrong. This, in fact, what's happened over the last quarter is actually really good. Because seven, like, if a market drops 70 odd percent and scares away like nearly everyone, that's going to delay the, the, the amount of time it takes for cryptos in general to become mainstream. Because that pain has caused, well, it's caused a lot of pain recently. There's so many people that bought at the all-time highs of Bitcoin at $19,000 or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's going to extend the, the, the period of time before it pops. But the longer Bitcoin has it in its runway, the bigger the market cap. So, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm just gonna, going to start, oh, by the way, um, $6.7 trillion, that was just the U.S. market. Only North America had any influence in the tech bubble crash. 
So China, Russia, India, the whole world didn't touch that. Cryptos is a global market. And governments didn't play around with the tech bubble. Governments and billionaires and banks are playing around with cryptos. So, hell, it could be 20 to $50 trillion before it pops. No one knows. And all I can do is just analyze and reassess as things go, go by. So if anyone says, yeah, it's definitely gonna crash at this point here, I leave the, the room and they're, they're a contender. No one knows. Um, number six, I think these are actually one of the best hedges against economic uncertainty. So typically when you have a crash of some sort, people tend to flee into perceived areas of safe haven. Gold, yen for some reason, the dollar for some reason, land and property. I'm more fond of land than property. But I also think that cryptos will be added to that perceived safe haven. Because it's an, technically it's an uncorrelated asset. Um, and so yeah, and, but, but when you look at this, but I'll show you a chart later, but basically it doesn't take much for a few trillion dollars to spill off the bond and the, t and the stock market um, into cryptos for, this, for cryptos to really, really boom. And here's the last, and the best, probably the, the, the single reason which negates every negative you can think of about cryptos. And it's also one of the previous negatives. This is the biggest bubble in human history. That's a good thing for you guys. So what this means is that it's also the biggest greater fools game ever. So please be honest, I want this to be a risk-free environment. Hands up if you don't know what a greater fools game is. Okay, a few of you. Okay, so let's say I create a new coin and I call it bullshit coin. And I get all of this table here to buy bullshit coin. Let's call it BS coin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Bloody spectacular coin, I don't know. Um, now, you guys at the groundbreaking level, you know, you're going to get it at a good price, etc. But the thing is, you're pretty, like, it's great for me because I've just sold it on to you guys. So, really, like, because this is technically a bit of a Ponzi scheme, the moment you, like, other people buy BS coin, you're sort of safe. You can maybe get your original investment back, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, it's like a big pyramid. Whoever comes in at the bottom is screwed. Does that make sense? It is a greater fool's game. So basically, you're, you're relying on another fool to get it, you know, to take the risk from you, basically. Um, and that's what crypt cryptos are in the short term. When I say short term, I'm thinking any time up to five years. Because right now, the public are completely, like, grossly naive to this. In fact, I, was, I, I went to the local bistro, pub, whatever, around for, for lunch once, and I was wearing a shirt that said, Keep calm and hoddle Neo or something like that. And, and the guy, the bartender, was probably 25 years old, a bloke, and he was like, so what does that mean? I was like, oh, um, oh I forgot I was wearing it. Um, and I was like, oh, it's a, you know, crypto. It's something to do with cryptos. And he was like, what's a crypto? I was like, okay, have you heard of Bitcoin? And I was like, what's Bitcoin? And like, I, I sort of froze for, it felt, felt like five minutes, and I was like, Oh my God, um, we're all living in this little cocoon. All of you have heard about cryptos and Bitcoin, but the public haven't. And if a millennial hasn't heard of Bitcoin, I mean, yeah. So <coughs> obviously that's a tiny data set, so you can't really gauge an <laughs> make an opinion based on that. But yeah, so long story short, the public are not in this yet. And the public won't be in this until you get rid of you know, the, the, the fact that comes with cryptos. In order to buy and stop like cryptos, it's a chore. You have to... You have to know how to buy, you, you mustn't store it on the exchanges. Anyone that stores cryptos on an exchange is asking for trouble. You will get hacked, or you'll lose it, or the, the, the exchange will close down and be hacked. Um, you have to store it, and it's a chore, and you're dealing with these 50-digit addresses and private numbers, oh, it, it's a chore. The public won't come in until it's as easy as online banking. And we're probably, what, two years away from that? There's a crypto called Ethos, which is trying to address that problem with a universal wallet, but yeah, it has to be as easy as online banking, if not easier. One wallet to store everything, and for you know any crypto to be able to buy anything else. So you need a, a cross-chain cross interoperability. Fancy word, ignore it. But yeah, long story short, the public aren't in yet, so you need to get in now, and then when the public coming in at the wrong, basically the public always does the wrong thing at the wrong time. And they will come piling in at the wrong time, boosting up the market, and that's when you need to exit. When your waster friend Dave down the pub has just sold his spleen to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> or, like, yeah, that, that is when you need to get out of cryptos. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> so, is Anders in a bubble? I know some of you have seen this before, so please. <laughs> so, is this a bubble? Is Amazon a bubble? No. Oh, good, you're all correct. Amazon is not a bubble. Hell, like, the reason it's not a bubble is because it, there's something behind the Amazon's share price, right? Like, I refuse to do any shopping other than Amazon Prime. Yeah. Like, I'm impatient, <laughs> I hate shopping, my blood levels, stress levels do this. Um, like, my wife knows she can't take me out in Norwich City Centre for more than two and a half hours before I get really grumpy. Um, so, yeah. And it, but the thing is, throughout all of Amazon's life, it's been labelled as a bubble. Look, when it started, it started around $5, 5 to $8, and then it zoomed, oh wait, the TV's chopped it off here, it zoomed up to about $100. Everyone said, it's a bubble, it's a bubble. And then I guess they were right, because it popped. And then 2002, back down to $8, 10 2002 to 2006, same sort of picture, zoomed up, halved. It's a bubble. And yet again, 2005 to 2008, same sort of thing, went from $30 all the way up to 100 back down to $4 or $37 roughly. Again, throughout all of Amazon's life, it's been labelled as a bubble. Well, look at it now. In fact, this chance is out today. I'm, I want to get an updated price. Stand by over. What is Amazon's share price? $1,000. Oh, just under $1,600. Mm -hmm. So it's gone from five, maybe $8, all the way up to $1,590 a share. And this, <laughs> this screenshot was taken at, at $1,100. So, but basically it's the same picture. It's gone from bugger all to, yes, owning everything. That is what cryptos will look like in 20 years' time. Okay? Now, the... This little bit here, oh, in fact, this is what Bitcoin looks like when you put it again. It's the same sort of thing. I think you need, I would urge you to become a, a student of bubbles, okay? We are living in a world of bubbles. Every freaking thing around us is in a bubble of some sort, exponential decay or exponential growth. Um, study bubbles, because then it is pretty much your roadmap to potential profits. It, it's made me money, like, it's made me a lot of money, but just by understanding um, bubbles, because when you understand bubbles, you understand human emotions, because it's humans that drive markets. That's it. We are the only species on the planet that have markets, and the only thing we think go up and down is because humans are buying and selling at certain levels. Anyway, what Bitcoin has just done is this little shenanigan here. Not even this bit here, it's this bit here, in my opinion, of course. So, yeah, we haven't even got this, this little crash here, which Amazon went through in, in, the, in the tech bubble crash, that is when I think cryptos will be around sort of 10 to 20 trillion dollars. And then, yeah, it's gonna be big. Um, so really, before I go any further, we have three of the biggest profit-making opportunities, I think, in human history. Because, three, okay? First one is get in now before the public. And then you get out as the public if you're getting in. Does that make sense? You're just getting in, nice and early. Buy and sell before it pops, okay? Um, the second opportunity is if you know how to trade, you can short this market, so you can profit as the market falls. Um, so I, I can't remember, earlier, before uh, tonight, I was saying to someone that um, with trading, I've made all of my trading money during market crashes. So it, on Black Monday 2015, I called that, and I made 422 grand in half an hour. Just because you, you can profit, basically markets move 3.3 times faster in a falling market than a rising market. But crashing markets move 10 to 20 times faster than a rising market. And statistically, from end of crash to beginning of new crash, is 8.3 or 8.6 years, I can't remember. 8.6 years, sorry. So statistically, once a decade, you will have a global market crash for the rest of your life. For as long as humans are around, there will be a global crash every decade. If you know how to short, you can profit 10 times faster than, than you would on a rising market. So that's number two. That's not for most people. I would say for 90% of people, I wouldn't bother shorting. Shorting. This is, it is tricky and it's very stressful. Third opportunity, which everyone can do, is basically become your own Warren Buffett. So Warren Buffett is renowned for <laughs> buying and never ever selling. Well, once the market pops, the crypto market pops, and the price is dissipated by 90 to 99%, what do you do? You get your Dyson out and you start hoovering up every freaking 
blue chip crypto there is, okay? Who would have liked to buy an Apple, Amazon, IBM, Microsoft back in 2002 at the bottom of the tech bubble crash? Yeah. Um, so it's over, only once you have real panic and capitulation in the market, that's when you need to Uber up and then don't sell. Because in 20 years' time, cryptos will own our life. I mean, hell, what do you, like, we all know what the internet's done, but what do you prefer, emails or money? Yeah, I think we all prefer money than emails, right? This is going to be way bigger than the internet was because the internet didn't have the internet to propagate it. Whereas cryptos, we now have social media and instant news, which is going to be an accelerator. It's like a steroid shot to, you know, boom it. I don't know why I'm leaning over there. I, I think it's because I'm, I'm going to try and stay with you, you guys for a moment here. Weird point to my right hand. Anyway, um, so anyone know what this animal is other than the people who have already seen this? <laughs> Kangaroo? Mm. Roger. Sorry? Roger. Roger, you've wow. seen this. <laughs> Any other animals? Mouse? No? Just curious, why did you say kangaroo? Because they're very small and they. Oh, you actually know about kangaroos? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea about anything about kangaroos um, <laughs> until a bit of Googling, but. According to my research, and I hope you can verify this, there's no other animal in the animal kingdom that grows as fast as the kangaroo does by percentage growth. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Are you a vet? Uh, no, no, I like eating, so I cool. don't oh, know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. One day, some like, and like, yeah, anyway. Um, this, is a big, this is a baby kangaroo. Tiny, tiny baby kangaroo. This is what an adult kangaroo, and this. As you quite said, right? This is Roger, the metal bucket crushing kangaroo. Um, they are hench, they are so strong, it's ridiculous. I'm a big fan of kangaroos now. Um, and the thing is, the reason I'm including this here is because crypto is right now is baby, baby Roger, and no one thinks of, no one can see the potential of baby Roger. And the metal bucket is the banking system. And literally, Roger is going to crush it and just throw it out. So, this is what cryptos look like when you compare it to other markets out there. So right now we're flirting with around sort of 0.4 trillion of market cap. Uh, gold is os oscillates between seven to nine trillion dollars. Um, in fact, depends what sources. There's apparently a lot of black gold out there, so that could be double. Anyway, um, stocks, 70 trillion dollars. Bonds, global bond markets, 100 trillion dollars. And then the global FX market is $1.4 quadrillion, roughly $5 trillion a day. It's dipped recently, but still in the quadrillion, uh, over a quadrillion a year. And this is what I actually think cryptos will be like in 20 years' time. I think it'll be $5 quadrillion plus. So this is, I mean, one reason is that I, I believe, in fact, what's the superpower of cryptos? Go on, I said it earlier. What's the superpower that cryptos have? It can't be regulated. That, yeah, it can be, it can be regulated. It's I disintermediation, yeah. It, it displaces middlemen, basically. Any, yeah. Anything that controls them. Well, what is the FX market, the currency market? It's the biggest middleman market on the planet. There is no reason for there to be middlemen in between. Like, if I'm a bank sending $50 billion to another bank cross borders, it takes three days, T plus three, to clear and millions in, in FX fees. And then you've got the exchange rate loss, etc. And so because there's exchange rate loss in the three days it takes to transfer, you then have loads of middlemen in, in between that adding liquidity, liquidity and insurance. Because if I send you $10 billion and only $9 billion re receives, there's a bit of a problem there, isn't there? So um, yeah, so cryptos gets rid of all of that. I can send you $10 billion without any middlemen in between, instantly, um, with zero fees. So the FX market will be eaten by the crypto market. It'll just, it'll just breathe it in. The stock market is a middleman market. There's no reason having the New York Stock Exchange or the London Stock Exchange, which are private entities, by the way. Hell, the, the, the London Metals Exchange is owned by China, one of our best cash flowing assets ever. We sold it for a fire sale to the Chinese. They are laughing. They're clever. I, I have huge respect for the Chinese. It's, they're the smartest nation out there, I, I, I believe. Um, 
So, yeah, so the, the stock market, the bond market, they will all be assimilated by cryptos. Or they'll just be more. They'll, they'll, they'll be using crypto technology to have a, a, a stock market. In fact, the more ostentatious thought I've been ruminating recently is that I don't actually think there'll, there will be a stock market in 10 to 20 years' time because everything will be tokenized. If I'm, like, it co in order to list your company on the stock market, it costs roughly three, mi three million dollars, roughly three years of, of work, of legal, back, of legal stuff. Um, it, it's a chore, and you need a certain market cap, or you need a certain size business to, to properly list on a market. It's a chore. Whereas a company could tokenize itself and basically launch, launch, basically launch its own stock, as it were. I'll talk about that in a sec. So, long story short, and also when 3.8 billion people come online, yeah, I, I think this is going to be huge. I've never seen a no-brainer in my life as big as this, ever. Um, even though I'm so negative about cryptos, every, like, when you form an opinion on something, 90% of your research has to be why you are wrong. Like, what am I going, like, like, nothing prepares you for data security and, and all sorts of other things when you have your hard-earned cash in a market. So if I am wrong, I want to be the first freaking person to realize I'm wrong before the bullet hits my basket, so to speak. And also, I've got like 3,000 crypto students, so if I am wrong, I want to make sure that I can get out and my, my students can get out and save themselves before it all goes under. So, you're probably thinking, yeah, I get it, but what does the future look like? Now, I've got, a, yeah, I've got another presentation which, go, which literally dissects the you know, potential future uses, which I'd love to share when I'm not to know. I've got to get you home before midnight. So, um, yeah, so basically here's my little mystic note. I've said this before, all middle men brokers are going to go bust. Well, displaced. They'll pivot. Business, business, business men, business women, entrepreneurs, such a wanky term. Um, we pivot, right? When things go wrong, we just pivot. Um, and I've said for ages, like, estate agents, you should be shitting yourself if there are any in here right now, because that is going to be the easiest market to, to displace. We have a wave of disintermediation going through our planet right now, with or without cryptos. We have Uber, the world's biggest taxi company, doesn't own a taxi. Airbnb, the biggest hotel company, doesn't own a hotel. Spotify, the world's biggest music company. Like, this is happening in every sector you can think of. Every sector is being displaced, using cryptos or not. And estate agents, you will be displaced as well. I don't have a thing against estate agents, but I'm just imploring all my friends who are to pivot now. Um, because you... It shouldn't take months to complete on a house. It shouldn't take all of the middlemen, the fees, the, the surveyors, the, the legal stuff. All of that can go on a blockchain with smart contracts, all, all the deeds, all the, the surveyors stuff. Like, this is for a basic house. Not, obviously, some property deals will have to have um, nurturing, but most deals can be put on a blockchain. So I could be browsing through Rightmove or Zoopla or a crypto equivalent of it and just buy a house like a pair of trainers on, online. And it will cost less than ten pounds in fees, less than ten minutes. Done. The moment you send your ether or whatever crypto over, the smart contract does everything. You get the deeds of the land. The, the, some middlemen or will, will get a tiny, tiny cut. Done. Um, and that's coming. That that's going to be here so fast. So yeah, land registries on a blockchain. This is great for the developing world. I think crypto is going to be better for the developing world than the developed world because now. Families can, you know, this will eliminate a lot of corruption because at the moment there's so many crooked politicians and policemen booting families out of their homes and just claiming the land. And the families can't do anything because they don't have guns. Um, or the inclination to use a gun. Not that I would, but anyway. Um, yeah, so that will, that will stop because when you have a, a public, immutable, transparent ledger saying that you own this plot of land, no one can touch it. This goes the same with voting as well. Only once we trust the voting system will people actually vote and that you can do it online. I think it's archaic that we have to go to a freaking village hall to, to vote in this day and age. I think it's archaic that you can't do any business like banking during the weekend or a bank holiday or have to wait up to two hours to do a banks. I know most of the time it's instant, but it's up to two hours. We can't do international payment in under a few hours without being charged 35 quid. 
I believe all of these things are archaic. Like cryptos, that you just get rid of that straight away. Like it will be archaic to have to wait to send money to anyone. Um, medical records on a blockchain, I moved from one side of Norwich to the other side of Norwich. It took like a month to transfer my medical records from one surgery to the next. Like that's going to stop. There's loads of um, cryptos out there trying to combat that. But all it takes is everyone to have their medical records on a blockchain, but you are the only person that has access to your medical records. And what you can do is if you go to another surgery, you, you, you just give them an API or like a, a private key or like a read-only thing and you go, right, here's my medical records, done. And then no filling in like five different pieces of, that the, the registrar lady got pissed off because I for the address I put the same as before, same as before, same as before, on five identical forms pretty much. Which I know you have to type, write it all out. I was like, no, I don't. But anyway, um, so yeah. And also, the medical record will be on a blockchain, probably connected to your th your your fingerprint, like a, a re like a very public one, like blood type, allergies, stuff like that. So if you're in on holiday or get knocked over by a bus, that could potentially save your life. Like if the paramedics know what blood type you are straight away, that could save your life. Storage, I'm going to speed things up because it's getting hot in here and I'm, I'm fearing of your attention. Um, so, yeah, storage, like on like cloud computing right now, isn't on a cloud. It's in a data center or four, somewhere around the world. If those data centers go bust, earthquake, bomb, whatever, you lose your data. Also, when you upload stuff to Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive, etc., you don't own that data. The company owns your data. Just like the bank, when you deposit £100 in your bank account, <coughs> legally, that's not your money anymore. The bank is simply loaning your money to you at 0% APR whenever you go to the cash point. Again, not many people know that. So again, any, so all of these industries, they are middlemen industries which have the control of the power of the trust. Crypto will get rid of all that. It's going to be great. Um, all records in the cloud, yeah, which will be a block table, or DLT. So that's business in a nutshell. Economy. Um, yeah, voting online, I think that's an easy one. Um, national currencies eventually will be cryptified. Um, in fact, the countries that resist this will lose out the biggest. Um, and countries should embrace this, because it will, it will streamline a lot of things, it will save a lot of money. Um, I, please, someone ask me in the Q&A downstairs why this is also a really bad thing. Yeah. So, potentially one world currency, maybe, again, another big topic, I'd love to talk about that later. Peer-to-peer -peer lending. We do not have P2P lending right now. Because if you go, let's say I'm a business and I want to raise money on Funding Circle or Kickstarter or whatever, the average fee is 5%. So you raise whatever you want and they take 5%. And it takes freaking, like, forever to, to raise money. And sometimes you don't even raise the money. With peer-to-peer -peer lending, like, you can raise money directly to you. So what I also believe that will spark are the creation of hundreds of stock markets. So, Norwich is the centre of the universe. Sorry, Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, we will see the Norwich stock market at some point, where a local micro business owner can put his company, or tokenise his business, put it on the local stock market, and can raise money directly. So, in fact, put it this way, it will be, be even cleaner. Because one of the things that people don't like about crowdfunding is, again, trust, right? If, I, if I'm going to lend you 100 quid, like, are you actually going to use that, or are you going to blow it on a car? Like, that is a valid concern. Would you not agree? Like, you, you, you worry if the business owner is actually capable enough to use that money to grow the business. Well, what could happen is, let's say, a, a business wants to buy a coffee machine. Okay, really crude analogy. Um, and wants to raise, you know, money to buy a big fancy coffee machine. Well, what could happen is that the person can go, hey, this is the thing I'm gonna, trying to fund. He, he raises the money, so the local people that use his business, etc., or it doesn't have to be local, they can all put a fiver in, a hundred quid in, whatever. But they don't have to worry about the trust element, because what happens, for every cup of coffee that is made from the machine, it will all be registered on the blockchain, and all the investors like, will be instantly paid into their wallet every time a, co a cup of coffee is made until they've made their return on investment and the machine is paid off. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So th there's no trust. So like, yeah, it's gonna be great. So in summary, cryptos are here to stay. 
it is an immense time to profit. This is like the tech bubble of the, the late 90s, but this is going to be bigger, badder, more horrible. Um, horrible and great, depends which way you look at it. Um, make sure you're on the great side of it, though. It, that's all down to you. If, if, if the crypto bubble ends up screwing you over, that's all your fault. Just going to push that on to you there. Um, <laughs> it is. like I'm giving you like the heads up here. What you do with it is your call. This is the wild, wild west. There are so many scammers and pretenders and whatever. Just never trust anyone with your cryptos. Don't ever give money to, for someone to go and buy it or whatever. Just do it yourself, honest, honestly. Just, just take, like cryptos is about personal monetary sovereignty. So just give your sovereignty over to someone else. Oh yeah, also use risk capital. Okay, so what I do, I guess it's a really cringy case of do as I say, not as I do. So my official line to everyone is only use risk capital, as in money you can afford to lose, and then once you've doubled your money, pull out your original sum, and then sit, sit, sit back and wait, because then you've got free cryptos. That's what I would recommend for 99% of people out there. What I personally do is a little bit different, um, which is, again, a long topic. So. I'm not silly, uh, I've only got 10, maybe 15% of my net worth in cryptos, but I've also got lots of cash flowing assets that add to my pot all of the time. So because I'm paid every month through business, all the businesses, etc., that 15% of my crypto portfolio will be diluted because the more, does that make sense? Yeah, so I'm not worried. And also you should never ever expose yourself to more than an 18 month loss. I look at risk in terms of time, not money. So. I never, I will never ever put myself in a position where I'll blow, lose more than 18 months of my life, okay? And I would highly urge you all to think of loss in terms of time. And you calculate, ca you calculate that by your <coughs> surplus monthly cash flow, okay? So if you lose 100 quid, but your surplus monthly cash flow is 100 quid, well, you've just pushed yourself back one month. If you lose a grand, you've pushed yourself back 10 months, yeah? Cool. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm a, like, I am obsessive about cash flowing assets. Uh, and that's why crypto is amazing, because they are also cash flowing assets, and they're a capital, capital appreciating asset as well. Um, don't pick individual coins, like find one coin, and, like, it's a mugs game. It's just like penny stocks on steroids. Um, don't, yeah. Try and find cryptos with real world utility. Okay, so uh, a crypto which is actually doing something in the real world. Uh, because when the eventual market pops, it's going to be the, the, the cryptos are actually doing real stuff that survive. Bear in mind, like most cryptos will disappear. The, the 90, over 90% of the price will drop, 90% of the amount of cryptos will disappear, 90% of market investors will also disappear. It's going to be amazing. Um, and avoid crypto MLMs like the plague. Oh, I cannot stress enough like there are four ridiculous scams in this in this market and two of them are being shut down as we speak so usi tech bitconnect one coin and das coin okay if anyone approaches you with doing any of those four like i would run a mile thank i was gonna say thank fuck but well, <laughs> i've already said it sorry um thank god um that two of them like bitconnect has already been is is being shut down uh, and also one coin is being shut down, well, there are proceedings against it, but yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, USI Tech is still going, but it, it's, it's hurt so many people. And I'm not against multi-level marketing um, schemes or network marketing, there are a few good ones out there, but the thing is, in the crypto space, crypto is there to get rid of middlemen. What is a network marketing business? It's a middleman. Once I was approached by someone to say, hey, would you like to buy this, this Bitcoin from me? I'm part of this MLM whatever. I was like, okay, why is there a $5,000 markup on this one Bitcoin? And it was all oh, because I'm going to be a one point of contact and you get blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, mm, no, I can just buy it at spot price. Thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah, educate yourself. So what the internet did to communication, cryptos will do that to money. And I'll say this over and over again, cryptos are the evolution of money, and blockchain tech, or DLTs, is the revolution of trust. Um, 
I'm just going to speed through these. Long story short, I have a, a community. So the reason I um, created this is because at one point I was getting over 300 notifications per day and over 50 personal Facebook messages per day, all asking the same thing. How do I buy this coin? Where do I find it? What are your top three favorite coins? Uh, all of the basic questions. So I created like um, a community. Um, it's the best community on the planet. But I'm biased, obviously. Um, and, a, and, a, and a crypto course to go with, so the base level knowledge is up there. Um, it's like the busiest Facebook group out there ever, I, where all your answers and quickly you get your questions answered within minutes by me and also um, a, a bunch, I call them, I haven't launched it, I'm going to launch it next week. I've, I've created the RT Avengers, the Realistic Trader Avengers. Um, I'm a bit of a Marvel geek. And um, yeah, so I've, I've trained up 10 really shit hot students who have who are now actually nailing cryptos. Um, testimonials of the yin yang. Long story short, in 2017, my community, um, at the time, I forget the number, but we made over 4.5 million pounds of profit, combined profit, exclu the not, that's excluding my profit in the community. Now, even with the recent dip, it's still over two million pounds. So when you make that much money, or help make that much money for people, you tend to get a lot of testimonials. So I've got them up the yin yang. Um, and I'm always posting like what my thoughts are. Um, what is this one? So I said here there's a high probability that NEO is going to fall to a certain level. And I said with any time in the next 16 hours, it's going to go down to that level there. Oops, I'm not really pointing. <coughs> and then it did that. Um, so in, yeah, some people started calling me a witch for a while. Um, so yeah, and also I want like there's so many scammy stuff out there. So we. Um, I've, I made it CPD accredited, so it's the only crypto course in Europe that's CPD accredited. Um, yeah, it's based, long story short, I'm just going to squeeze through these. It's everything you need to know how to buy, what to, when to sell, how to sell, um, how to store things safely, basically become um, competent on the market and also, and also profitable. Um, yeah, loads of screenshots, yada yada yada. As you can tell, I'm the world's best salesman. As well, so, <laughs> so um, yeah. So that is about it. I just want to get to the Q and A bit. Oh yeah. So it's basically it's just three hundred seventy five pounds plus that. That is it. And you get three months of. So you get the course for free, and you get three months worth of the community. And with the community, you get a couple of perks. So the perks. Well, okay, three months is one of the perks. <laughs> um, really good Facebook group, as I just mentioned. Oh yeah, every single crypto alert, oh, every trade I place and every portfolio movement I place, I text it out to the, the Facebook group and also the Telegram group. We've got a private Telegram. Um, so I post that out. Um, second perk is that you get a free intensive one day workshop from nine till I think five with me. It's, and the mentors, it'll be in Milton Keynes every quarter. Um, Martika, when the next quarterly special? And so, first, so the 1st of June is the next workshop thing, and the 2nd of June, um, which we'll talk about later in a sec, is our quarterly special. Every quarter, we have a big meeting with guest speakers and prizes and giveaway, giveaways and stuff, and we'll, it'll be around 200 plus people there, so it's really good, all fellow RT Kryptonians. Um, so that's that, yep. People like the workshop, good old. Um, yeah, so we have a quarterly event, and we also have a bi-monthly crypto cuddle, which is basically beer and pizzas with, there's probably going to be about 15 members in each. It's in London for the crypto cuddle. Sorry, Martika, when's the crypto cuddle? Oh, you've got me, June, July. July, okay. Martika is my PA at the back. As you can tell, I know nothing about the business. Uh, Martika is my business mummy, so she deals with everything. Um, I'm just a talking monkey that is wheeled out. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, these we, we, yeah, the, the debates are really cool. We've got a really good one, actually. Actually, We've got the um, UK's leading mining authority um, coming to battle it out against um, my, my crypto mentors. Uh, and the, 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 the main topic or debate of the day is mining versus masternoding. Anyone familiar with masternoding? No? It's like, yeah. So... I'm not going to give my opinion, I'm, it, it, just be there, it's going to be so fun. Um, yeah, more screenshots. And the last one, oh yeah, I'm giving away a masternoding course for free. So I've got my, so with our RT Avengers, we have three crypto mentors, three trading mentors, and three uh, masternode mentors. And so I've got the uh, hands up, I always put my hands up when things I don't know. 
I am not fully versed with master noding because I'm not a geek. I love geeks, by the way. I, I wish I was a proper computer geek, but I, it's way over my head. So my three master noders, they know their shit. Um, so I've got them to build this course with my input, etc. So yeah, I'm yeah, I'm giving that course away for free. So yeah, join the community. It's fun. Um, Q and A. That's the best bit. After John comes over here and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, any questions? Yes, hit me. Um, you look very familiar. I'm on your, I'm on part of the community, hey. um, so, which is absolutely awesome. I highly recommend everybody should do it. Um, so, what's your full name again? Oshan Lewis. O S I A N, isn't it? Yes. 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 Um, yes. One yes. question that I've got, something I, I didn't quite get from the course, is cool. when you buy something like Ethereum, yep. you, you actually buy Ether, right? You buy a token. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about a company with, uh, or a crypto with real world utility, Humana for example, yep. I don't actually buy a part of that company no. like I would if I bought a share of Amazon. No, you don't. What, so what am I actually buying? I don't really understand. Buying that. nothing. <laughs> so this is the beauty and the scam diggery of, of cryptos in general. Because there, there's a thing, uh, is, anyone, is anyone familiar with the Howey test? The how are the US at the moment, um, where the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, is clamping, trying to clamp down on cryptos. And they're saying, if something looks like a security, smells like a security, and acts like a security, it's a security. So what is a security? A security is something where you put money in and hope you make a return, in a nutshell, like a stock, or a bond, or it has bearing issues of some sort, okay? Well, what the SEC are trying to say is that, well, cryptos are securities, because you're investing in a crypto hoping to get a better a return a cash flow or the profits of a potential business etc <coughs> and so that's what the howie test is so loads of cryptos when they're launching at the moment they're trying to see if they can get around the howie test but the thing is the, the sec are saying anything where you put money in and you're hoping to get money out like more it's a security so there's a big hoo-ha so going back to your question and and the, the question was like <coughs> If you're, if you're buying a crypto of a company, you're not, you don't actually own shares of the company. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. There are some cryptos out there where they will attribute their company earnings to the cryptos, to, to, the, to the actual tokens. So if the company does really well, it may airdrop some extra tokens, or they may burn some of the supply. So it has a deflationary effect, so the price goes up. So some do that, whereas some, they've seen it as the best cash raising opportunity in history, where they go, the bank's aren't lending, I'm too small to IPO, I can't raise any money, no one's actually gonna lend me any and lend us any money. So what we're gonna do is create an ICO and we're gonna or create we're gonna basically tokenize our business and let's say our company is X company, well we're gonna launch X coin. And then we're gonna promote X coin. And then people go, oh wow, this company's launching X coin, it's gonna be amazing where there's absolutely zero correlation or link between the token and the company. Ripple is a prime example. Ripple, XRP, is created by Ripple Labs. Ripple Labs is a, is a private company that makes financial products for the banking sector. So a lot of people think, oh yeah, I'm buying into the banking sector, blah, blah, blah. Nope. They have literally plucked 100 billion of XRP out of their ass and sold it to the public. Well, no, they sold 40 or 60% to the public. They're making pure margin. They've literally just got a piece of paper and gone, yeah. Sell, done, uh, and that's it. There's no link from Ripple to Ripple Lab. So, does that explain what? No, sort of. You confirmed my fear, but I, I, yeah. I still don't <laughs> yeah. quite yeah. get like, why, why I'm, people I'm, are actually just falling into speculation, right? And, Correct. And profiting from that. Yes. And that's that fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As I said, this is a great fool's game. Yeah. Like, all we're doing, all I do is I, I am gaming the public, yeah. if that makes sense. All I'm doing is I'm gaming public emotions. So I see a particular coin, and I'm not thinking, uh, yes, I'll look like, if it's a real world utility, you know, in depth and go, okay, that's something I'm definitely gonna hold. But some of the cryptos where I'm in for a short period of time, I'm going, okay, what is the average Joe public gonna do when they see this coin? Yeah, they're probably gonna get in, they're gonna fall for all the hype, it's probably gonna double. All I'm doing, I'm gaming that. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to, yeah, so for example, Tron, is anyone all familiar with Tron, yes, no? So Tron is one which I was keen on, I'm not so keen on now, because there's an event coming up at the end of the month called the Mainnet Launch, where they're launching their own actual network. Um, 
and I have gone all in on Tron at the moment. When I say all in, all in on my, my portfolio. Because what tends to happen before a mainnet is launched with a big, big, or well-known crypto is that people go, oh, the mainnet's launching, and they, they pile in. So I'm simply getting in now before that, that mad dash, and they'll pull out probably a week, maybe three days before it launches. Because the second it launches, guess what will happen to the price? Yeah, exactly. So, your worst fears are confirmed. This is a shitty market. So, sorry, I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Um, do you see, um, between any DeFi tokens and the IC trends, mm -hmm. do you see them as both, they can work alongside each other, or do you see one? Nope. Over the other? There can only be one, like Highlander. Uh, I, 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 I wish I had a chart. I'm going to draw a picture. I hope you don't mind. Sorry, I know you're probably all bursting for a wee. Um, I'll take one other question after this. So here is the thing. Uh, okay, I'm going to quickly draw a chart. I love Microsoft Paint. I wish I was good at it. Okay, so this line over here, let's make it red. So this is what, let's let, or pink, let, let's say this is the, 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 uh, the, the, ah, I can't, the threshold, the, Critical mass threshold? No, there's a term. Anyway, let's call it the, the, the critical mass threshold, okay? CMT. And what happens at the moment, we have, let's take, so um, what you're saying, MT5 <coughs> and ERC20, so we have NEO and Ethereum, which are both um, DAP platforms, decentralized app platforms. Long story short, they're like, they're trying to be the WordPress, okay? So you know WordPress builds loads of lovely websites? At the moment, there's a mad dash to become the WordPress of cryptos, yeah? Ethereum is one, Neo is the other. Um, but the thing is, all of the cryptos right now, they started at zero, and they're bumming along like this, and they're, get, and they're gaining traction, they're getting users, etc. but everything is in exponential growth, right? But the thing is, it's not the race to see how, who, who can get 90% of the market cap. The race is to see who can hit this critical mass threshold first. Does that make sense? Because what you can have is you can have a really basic crappy platform which hits this bit here first, and you can have another really good, way better tech that is, you know, way better than the, what, but, it, but just because it's just a little bit lagging, it's gonna lose out. Because by the time the critical mass threshold is hit, this crypto will be in exponential growth in terms of traction, media, um, popularity, etc. And then the user base will shoot up. So like VHS Betamax, some hardcore fan apparently say Betamax was actually a better technology than one because it hit the critical mass threshold. I'm sure there's some fancier scientific name. But at the moment, going back to this race here, oh, where's my mouse? Ethereum is like here at the moment. And there are loads of other cryptos probably around this area here. And so, as I said, there can only be one. NEO, the NET5 token, is way better than the ERC20 token. Way better. But Ethereum is winning. Um, oh, that go relates back to your question. NEO is actually, when you're buying NEO, you're buying a share of the NEO platform. So that's why it spits out a divvy gas, as you know. So, yes, yeah, sometimes, yeah, you, you are buying a chunk of the, of, the, of the company. So, one last question, and I think we'll have to end it. Sorry, the, it's yourself, sir. Uh, we're talking, like, 20 years ago, we were talking on uh, where you think it's going to go to the peaks. Do you think, uh, do you see quantum computing as being a threat in that time, though? No. No. I used to, and then I started really digging into quantum computing. And I quickly realised I didn't understand 99% of what I was reading, because it's quantum computing. Um, and I'm an idiot from Norwich. However, what I did realize is that when you look at things on a bigger picture, let's say right now we have a quantum computer, okay? I just created a new fancy quantum computer, computer and it looks like a chair. And this quantum computer can hack, by the way, for those of you who are unfamiliar with a quantum computer, it's basically a computer many magnitudes order bit bigger, better, faster than any of the biggest supercomputers on the planet, right? And technically speaking, a fully functioning quantum computer right now can hack any network, any password, any encryption, even 256, SHA-256. SHA um, 
So, it's a pretty big super weapon, right? Now, let's say we all own this machine. And we are bastards, and we're going to hack one, you know, we're going to try and, and make as much money as possible, okay? Let's say all of a sudden we lose our morals, and we're, we're going to use this. So, the second we use and deploy our quantum computer, the whole world will know about it. Yeah? Okay, so that's one thing you need to consider. The second the whole world is aware that a quantum computer exists, would it be fair to say that every secu data security expert on the planet will then be working ways to quantum proof their systems? Yeah? So that then leads me to the conclusion that really, if we have a quantum computer, we've got one bullet in the chamber before all the, the governments around the world go, holy shit. Now, with one bullet in the chamber, <coughs> are you, and don't forget the object is to get hack and get as much money as possible, are you really going to dick about with a 0.4 trillion dollar market when there is a 1.4 quadrillion dollar market um, just over there? No. In fact, even if you don't touch, like, you're far more likely to hack the bond market than the crypto market, aren't you? And as an everyday investor, like the everyday crypto investor probably has anywhere between 500 quid to 10 grand, yeah? You don't need to worry. Hell, even if you're like a, a crypto billionaire, you don't need to worry. Because it's far easier just to hack a pension company and take, I don't know, $100 billion. So I wouldn't worry because quantum computing will be targeted elsewhere. It's like the Enigma machine. The, the, the Brits cracked the, the Nazi Enigma machine um, like for a long time before we ever used it. We, uh, in fact, the UK let Coventry get flattened, and we knew about it. We let Coventry die, and we, we didn't stop it, because you, we knew that if we intercepted that fleet and pr protected Coventry, the Germans would have known that we'd hacked the Enigma machine. So we only used the information that we Packed when we actually needed, I did one bullet in the chamber. So I'm so sorry, John, I've gone on forever. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. I will be back. How was that? Educational? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, uh, now's the time. Um, all my members, can my members all please stand up? Right, uh, Simon's going to go downstairs. Uh, we're going to have photo and branding opportunities downstairs to all the non members. If they could just shift forward here, I'll explain to you what we're going to be getting up to now. So, non members, guests, please stay. We've got some more for you.